In this video, we're going to learn how to do a transformation with Zymo Research Mix and Go cells. Our lab just calls these ZCOM cells. In our lab, these are found in the large uh, minus, 80, minus 80 upright freezer. We're here on the third shelf, in the third rack. And because I'm going to be transforming with ligation mixtures, I'm going to use these larger aliquots, uh, 100 microliter aliquots box is labeled like that. So I'm just going to take two aliquots and I'm very quickly going to just place these on ice. Uh, place these on ice. And I'm going to allow my competent cell aliquots to thaw on ice for about 10 minutes before I use them. After allowing my competent cell aliquots to thaw for about 10 minutes, I want to add DNA to them. These are ligation mixtures, but the procedure would basically be the same if you were adding whole plasmid. Uh, you'll note that I am working under a flame here. I'm trying to maintain a, uh, aseptic technique. So I have my two aliquots of competent cells there. I'm going to grab my 10 microliter pipette, and I'm because I'm doing a ligation mixture, uh, I'm going to add five microliters of the ligation mixture to each competent cell aliquot. This is really the only part in the procedure where the, it would uh, differ if I was transforming with whole plasmid. These cells have a uh, competency of about 10 to the 6th colony forming units, maybe a little bit greater than 10 to the 6th colony forming units per. So I'm taking my ligation mixture, I'm actually just going to pipette up and down a couple times. And then I'm going to pipette that directly into the combinant cells. And you'll know that I'm using my pipette to blow bubbles uh, from the bottom of the combinant cell aliquot. That's a really gentle way of mixing. You do not ever want to mix combinant cells uh, by pipetting. The shear. exerted on the cells by passing them through the uh, orifice of the pipette repeatedly um, can lice some of the cells and that will reduce your transformation efficiency. So again, pipetting up and down in the uh, ligation mixture, but when I add the DNA to the competent cells, I'm just swirling as I depress my pipette, uh, or as I um, dispense the material from the pipette, and then blowing bubbles through the volume a couple times to get vertical mixing. Okay, and now we're just going to leave those on ice for five minutes, for between two and five minutes. So, as I was saying before I interrupted myself, these um, Z-Comp cells, these 100 microliter aliquots, have a transformation efficiency of about 10 to the 6th colony forming units per microgram, or per microgram of DNA, yeah. So, uh, if you were transforming with whole plasmid uh, from an average mini prep, right, about 100 nanograms per microliter, and you used five microliters of your, say, whole plasmid, you would get an outrageous number of colonies. Um, so, again, you'll want to calculate how much DNA you use based on the transformation efficiency of your cells and the concentration of your DNA samples. After about two to five minutes, we're now ready to dispense our transformed cells either onto a plate or um, into SOC for a recovery step. The beauty of uh, Zymo's uh, mix and go cells, or Z-Comp cells as we call them, is that you don't actually need a heat shock step, and if you're transforming with basically an ampicillin resistant plasmid, there might be a couple of other antibiotics. But if you're transforming with an ampicillin resistant plasmid, you do not need to do an outgrow or a recovery step. I'm going to do that today because I'm transforming with a ligation mixture and I want to maximize my transformation efficiency. But again, that might not be that would not be necessary 
if I was transforming with uh, amp resistant whole plasmid. So hold on one second, I'm gonna go turn my Bunsen burner back on. Okay, so I'm going to take 70% ethanol and dry wash my hands with that before I reach into this autoclaved beaker here of two mil tubes. So I've got two sterile two mil tubes. And ordinarily I would be doing this in a in an actual tube rack for microcentrifuge tubes, but since I, since I only have two samples, I'm just gonna do this. And I'm going to aliquot out one mil, one mil of SOC to each tube. All right, so I've got my sterile P1000 tips here. And there we are. label those with something recognizable. I've only got two transformations today. I already did my control earlier. Okay, so now using blunted pipette tips, I'm going to transfer the entire contents of these competent cells, these transformed competent cells, into these two mil tubes containing SOC for a recovery step. So the reason I'm doing, the reason I'm using these uh, blunted pipette tips, as you can see, I've cut off the tip of the pipette, or the tip of the pipette tip before I autoclave them. The reason I'm doing that is competent cells are very delicate. So pipetting them, uh, the shear that you exert on them by pipetting them can disrupt the cells. So to avoid that, I'm using blunted pipette tips. That's not entirely necessary. You can get away with using non-blunted pipette tips, uh, but you'll want to try to pipette more slowly if you're doing that. Uh, whereas you can work a little bit faster if you're using blunted tips. And two. So now I'm going to take these two tubes and I'm going to put them on a rocker plate in the 37 degree incubator for about 20 minutes. We don't need to do a particularly long recovery step since uh, the plasma that I'm transforming with is ampicillin and that's a bacterial, bacteriostatic antibiotic, not a bactericidal one. So I'm going to put these for a 20 minute recovery step before I spread them on plates. After allowing my cells to recover on the rocker plate in the 37 degree incubator for 20 minutes, I want to now recover the cells or harvest the cells that are in suspension. So to do that, I'm going to put these in the centrifuge and spin them down for three minutes at no more than 4,000 RCF. Once my cells are done spinning, I want to remove them from the centrifuge and discard the supernatant. My pellet is going to be pretty small. The purpose of the recovery step is to allow your cells to recover, not to allow them to multiply. Remember, this SOC doesn't have any selection antibiotic in it, so if I leave them in the incubator for too long, uh, 
my non-plasmid bearing cells will start to outnumber my plasmid bearing. Well, they already do, but I will uh, I will replicate too many non-plasmid bearing cells. Okay. So at this point, I want to turn on my Bunsen burner. The valve for this is inconveniently far away. So here I have two uh, AMP 200 plates, LB Auger AMP 200 plates, that I've pre-warmed in the 37 degree incubator. I'm going to dump out these aliquots into a tube here. The reason why I'm not using my liquid waste is I don't want aerosolized material kicked up from my liquid waste to contaminate my, uh, my transformed cells. You'll note that I'm just pouring that off. I'm not I'm not shaking it down, and the reason for that is, and I'll just throw away this tube in my solid waste, the reason I'm doing that is because the remaining liquid in there is what I'm going to use to spread my cells out on these plates. So at this point, our cells should be durable enough, oh dear, uh, I'm out of my pet tips, our cells, um, our cells should be durable enough that we don't need to use blunted pipette tips. One moment. I'm sorry. And I'm back. The reason why I didn't want to use the blunted pipette tips is actually because the sharper tip will make it easier for me to get all of my cells out of the bottom of the container. Okay. So I'm going to gently scrape my pellet off the wall of the centrifuge tube. I'll pipette up and down a couple times to make sure that all the cells are resuspended. My cells should be less shear sensitive now that I've allowed them to recover an SOC. Okay, there we go. And I'm going to dispense that entire thing to my plate. Again, because I'm transforming with, uh, with a ligation mixture, so I expect my transformation efficiency to be considerably lower. If I were transforming a whole plasma, I might only take a portion of that, or I might not have even spun them down. I might have just taken 100 microliters of the total mixture. Okay, and now for ligation transformation two. Okay, aspirate all of the cells and I'll dispense those onto this second plate here. Okay, so now I want to spread these cells on the plates. In general, I want to spread them in the same order that I aliquoted them, or as I dispense them onto the plates, right? Because that liquid is going to start absorbing into the plates. So here I have a, a turntable of sorts. And so I'm gonna start with the first one that I dispensed. Here I have a glass spreader in ethanol. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove my glass spreader from the ethanol. I'm going to give it a flick of the wrist just once to get down the bulk of the ethanol and then I'm going to flame it really quickly. So again, note that I didn't take that out of the ethanol and then hold it in the flame, right? Because then my uh, my glass spreader would be really hot. I'm just make sure that the flame is out. I'm just dipping it in the ethanol, flicking off the bulk of the ethanol, but not too much, flaming it. I'll just pass that through the flame once to make sure that all the ethanol is gone. Now, again, this is still pretty warm, not as warm as it would be if I'd held it in the flame, but it's still warmer than I want it to be when I'm contacting my cells. So when I put it on the plate, I'm actually going to touch it to the plate away from where my cells are, away from where I've dispensed my cells. And I'm going to rock that spreader back and forth a couple times to cool it down on the auger before I go and spread my cells. And that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll just spin that. Note that I'm barely pushing down here. I'm really just holding my my spreader above the plate. Uh, if I push, if I'm pushing down too hard, 
again, I'm going to be applying shear to my cells uh, be uh, between the spreader and the surface of the auger. I'm really just letting the weight of the spreader um, do the majority of the work. Okay, so the same thing for the next one. I'll actually put that over there. Same thing for the next one. Dip that in ethanol, flick it off, and okay. Here we are. You want to be sure that you're not flicking flaming ethanol onto paper or plastic. I almost got that thing. So same thing, right? I don't want to put the hot spreader on my cells because that would kill my cells. So I'm going to put it over here on the auger. Arc it back and forth. And now I'm going to spread my transformed cells on the plate. There we are. Of course, so sometimes when you have uh, newer plates or if you don't have time to pre-warm these, there might be more moisture in your plates, in which case it'll take you considerably longer to spread the cells. Uh, it'll take longer for them to absorb. But Anyway, so now I'm going to take these two plates and I'm going to put them in the 37 degree incubator and I'll have colonies hopefully in about 10 hours.